how exciting um yeah man i'm, I'm pumped i'm pumped for this uh, all right yeah let's do this all right hello and welcome to ponytails podcast episode 27 a special episode for your co-host nick and your co-host andres we are hanging out with our first live in-person guest colin appel a four summer bookman from the force We've, he is in person with andres there in lincoln nebraska um colin is an old old friend of mine um which is kind of interesting to say because it's it's really been five years uh, which is you know on the grand in the river of centuries it's but a pebble right but uh colin's first summer was in vermont with and Partly in New Hampshire with myself. We were roommates. He is current roommates with Andres. And uh, man, all I got to say about Colin and, is that uh, he's like the best at inside jokes, at least in my experience. We've got uh, plenty of memories to reminisce on from that first summer. Um, and Andres probably has some more memories that I don't even know about that exist. Uh, but yeah, spent four summers. Um, help him build the force organization, which he has left and gotten into in different um, positions in, in the workforce. We're going to find out about those. And um, insurance, I know, is a, a stop he's made. And um, yeah, he, he helped set the foundation for the force, which is now off and growing um, to a great rate with uh, Andre's younger brother. But uh, yeah, welcome, Colin. We're excited to have you on and we're excited to delve into some awesome memories and <laughs> reminisce but also talk about some times that you spent on the book field without either of us um because i really haven't heard too much of those um summers but uh yeah it's crazy bro. so welcome colin about bro it's so funny that this is we're live you should yeah thanks for having me on guys <laughs> you know yeah. i can say that i've uh heard a lot of episodes up close through the wall um <laughs> but uh i've never been in front of the camera so this is pretty cool. Yeah, man. It's so well, it's good um, to have you. So normally we ask people uh, how they got into Southwestern, but we both have a part in this story. So we're going to let you go first. <laughs> yes. And then we'll go from my side. <laughs> um, how I got into the business. Um, well, let's see. I, uh, I was in my sophomore year at Doan University. And um, I was actually just getting out of track practice. Um, and I saw that I had a missed call on my phone, which at the time, I mean, in college, sophomore year, uh, I didn't return a lot of missed calls. Um, uh, but I, it was the same area code. So I figured, hey, it, it's probably someone I know, you know, trying to get a hold of me for some reason or not. Um, so I call him back. And it was actually Danny Gamboa, um, Andres' brother, for those of you that don't know. Um, and uh, so there's even a background of this story. So again, we're from the same city or same town, the uh, Grand Island. That's right. The island. The island. And uh, which is neither. He was one year older than me, so he's, he was the grade above me. And Andres, I believe, I think he graduated. Dude. No, you were a senior when I was a freshman. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. So um, I knew of the Gamboas. Um, they were pretty good soccer players, as they would tell you. Um, <laughs> okay. Right. and uh that, that's one way to treat people <laughs> no but they were they're very involved in their community um andres i knew of him because he um did a public speaking event for uh the purple hands association foundation pledge, i don't know thing, pledge yeah. um so he basically got to tell his family story and it was inspirational and uh he got to go around to all the middle schools and do that um so i was a middle schooler sitting there in the crowd when I got to hear about Andres um, and his family for the first time. Um, so I kind of knew of them and uh, Daniel, like I said, him just being a, a year older than me. Um, we were kind of in similar crowds, but not really. Um, so when I heard that Danny was on the phone, I was like, hey man, what's up? <laughs> like, <laughs> how, how's, how are you doing? Um, because we really didn't have that rapport. Um, we, again, we knew of each other in high school. Um, we recognized the name, the face, but uh, not a guy that I ever hung out with or, uh, you know, had like any 
classes with or anything like that. So uh, it was just pretty random. And uh, he was like, hey, I'm, I'm doing this internship and I'm going to be on campus uh, on X day and you should be there. And I'm like, all right, yeah, man. Um, sure, what time are you thinking? <laughs> like, you know, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, and uh, you know, he told me the time, told me the place. So I showed up and this guy was there. I was there. That guy, this not guy the other there. Gamboa? Not the other Gamboa. Yeah, I, had, uh, Fitch, right? I was full-timing at Doan. I was full-time at Doan and I had uh, like four commits and none of them showed up. Danny had one and it was Colin. And he showed up. I'm like, oh, I know this kid. And uh, I was like, yeah, man, come on in. I'll just tell you about what we do for the summer. Oh, well, yeah. What's that? The old one on one notebook. The old switcheroo. Yeah. That's what they call that. Oh, yeah. The old switcheroo. I was looking for Danny. What? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I and I must have killed it because he sold for four summers. So mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. know. That's exactly what you did, Andres. Good job. <laughs> I can't. I just, I just can't believe none of my four showed up. I was like, this is bullshit. And then. <laughs> hey, well, you recruited Danny, Andres. Give yourself some credit. I guess. But that was like more like, a, hey, come do this. I don't right. think Danny ever went through a process, but yeah, man. So that's how Colin got in. And then, yeah. So that? let's talk about he was that. The one that showed up for the, the notebook or the interview. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just me, him, and it was actually Sarah, our uh, career yeah. lady. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it was pretty cool. Actually, uh, shout out Mitch Johnson um, from Grand Island as well. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, he was a big reason why I. I kind of gained traction and some interest because I did hang out with him in high school. Um, and, uh, I knew him pretty well and I knew that he was doing this. Uh, he had gone out and sold. I think he was going on the second summer. Um, and he'd done very well. He'd finished strong. He was like top first year and everything. So, um, that definitely helped me kind of like think like, ah, like Mitch is already doing it. Uh, I know Danny, I know Andre. So there was this grand Island connection um and it's still a pipeline for yeah. for book kids <laughs> a lot of a lot of good book kids at a gi for sure we got uh the head recruiter shout out hot rod yeah hot, hot rod's, rod's my dad <laughs> for those of you who don't know hot rod gambo out there <laughs> doing work he's killing cool. it he's killing it for southwestern yeah man so i remember that summer um you went out because it was just, this was late in the in the spring so it was like in april maybe yeah. And uh, you were going to compete first. Yep. So Colin, for those of you who don't know, and he's too humble to let you know, Colin's a freaking stud athlete. So the guy uh, went to college uh, and uh, ran track super, super fast, went to finals, nationals, mm-hmm. right? Um, killed it. And so he would go compete in that before he would go out for the summer. He always had a shorter summer. But you went out there. And then on your first day into the book field, you followed me. That's right. I did. It's a good time. I pull up. He's wearing his little polo, looking all <laughs> pretty boy. I'm like, this kid's going to sweat. Better, better buckle up, boy. It's about, you're about to become yeah, a man. Up in uh, Mont- Pelier, Vermont? Yeah, right next Mont- to Pelier. Waterbury, Waterbury, Vermont. Good time. Yeah, shout mm-hmm. out Vermont. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was. I do remember that. I remember one of my first memories on the book field was uh andre's freaking out because i walked up to a door he stayed in the car and uh there was you know like the little plastic glass door in front of like the the main door so like that was closed but or the the main door is closed or no, no, the main door is open and it was just that the like screen door is closed yeah. little screen door um so i knock on it and the guy sees me through the door and he cat older guy um probably not a prospect but it's my first day in the book field so he goes and i'm like me (laughs) (laughs) and he's like and didn't even say anything so i i just pick up my bag and go in and i don't know if you even remember this (laughs) i I remember andres from the car being like colin what are you doing (laughs) like (laughs) what are you doing man because he didn't see him from his angle so I he was view. breaking in. I'm like, no, bro, you gotta wait till someone comes to the door. From his he view, he just walked in. I just knocked twice, and I was like, 
All right, well, someone's got to be in here. <laughs> <laughs> like that's committed to getting a sit down. That's what that was. Yeah. So I do remember that. Um, I remember having a couple sit downs. I think you had a sit down and maybe went back and, and sold her after you dropped me yeah. off. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, there's nothing like your first follow day on the book field. Yeah, dude. Because for me, it was a moment of like, like you're learning and on the fly pretty much pretty fast and then there's the like oh shit moment of i'm going to be doing this by myself tomorrow <laughs> uh which terrified me yeah uh but yeah that, that was a that was a good first taste of the book film nick nick did you get to follow on your first day or did you sell on your first day and then go follow the next day i did follow on my first day it was with miles barrow shout, shout out. out to miles yeah yep. he's living good i dude. think in san diego if he's not in LA. san diego we are not sponsored by nike or padres we are not sponsored by nike or padres have to say but you could be sponsored potential sponsors possibly you (laughs) yeah hit us up through ponytails podcast facebook page or individual stepbrothers good job (laughs) we do movie quotes oh dude that was actually really funny to do (laughs) look that's weird um anyway point is uh yeah so the, the the first follow day I had was actually my second day. Mm. I I I was uh my first store, I was like, all right. <laughs> and I was a like, grandma. Are you the mom of the house? Just, I guess. Like, oh, that's damn. right. I did, I did knock on dude, that's hilarious. I also I remembered, yes, I did knock on my first day alone, and it was a grandma who answered that first door. It's it's yeah. a trippy feeling. What do you guys remember from your first story? Like, what, what do you remember? Because I remember mine like it was yesterday. Yeah, I think everybody <laughs> remembers their first yeah. story, man. It's like, oh, yeah. But what do you remember? Like, did you guys so for getting me, your first pube? <laughs> um, no, I, I remember like shaking, trembling, walking up to the door, and like fumbling through my pitch like she didn't even know what I was doing I think she was like like thought I was asking for directions or something and I just I remember walked back to the car and I was like oh that was rough like there's nothing like my sales talk nothing like I had practice in um uh, sales school it was just like words and like trembling <laughs> just terrible but um and then like an hour and a half later um I sold my first one through four what? And yeah. I was like, God, this is easy. This is easy to have to me. Yeah. Remember your first customer? Oh man. I do oh, remember my first customer, Robin Conkey. That was like middle of week one, probably middle of week two. I did not have a, a quick start by any means. And uh it was, I remember um just kind of like seeing a car there in the front, um, in the garage or the driveway. And then like knocked on the door, no answer, knocked again, no answer. And I'd already knocked and given at least like 180 demos or close to. And I'm like, I'm just, I hear, I know they're home. And I like saw the dog at the the gate to the backyard. And I was like, oh, there's people back there. I'm like, hello, hello. And I, I finally make it back there and struggle through my sales talk, but I'm giving it as close to word for word as possible. And they're like with it. And they're like, yeah, we use this. And I'm like, cool so it's this much and they're like we can't afford that my my husband just left me for california and i've got four kids and i can't afford this and I, it was a weak customer uh delivered and and they couldn't they didn't have any money so i was like here take a volume of the books and uh yeah that was my first customer damn my first guy my first customer was uh grandpa oh shit he bought one through four yeah Oh, for his grandkids huh actually yeah i think he had grandkids but they weren't even for his grandkids so he he bought them to donate them wow yeah hmm. and uh looking back on it it was so interesting i'm like i think about that i'm like it's like a guy in his mid-70s and he was just like buying a book yeah donate to a school 500 dollars books <laughs> just to Casual a school huh? first day pony hmm. That's a ponytail right there. Yeah, right there. The my first customer was actually on the way to the book field. So we yeah, you told me about this. Yeah, my first summer we were going to upstate New York, and we went the 
we haven't even got to the town yet because we had to stop and stay overnight because we've driven a long day. And we were doing execs the next day, like after we'd sit in the hotel in the parking lot. And for those of you who are listening who maybe didn't sell books for whatever reason, um, execs are what we do to pump each other up. It's like a crazy cultish dance that we do <laughs> to pump oh, each other up. <laughs> And it's a pump up, but uh, we were doing that in the parking lot. And this guy goes, I was like, what the hell are you guys doing? And I'm like, oh, we're in this internship and we sell books and it's books? super awesome. And he goes, books? what kind of books? And I'm like, well, they're, they're like to help kids with like homework and school stuff. And he's like, do they help with math? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I realized, I said, um, so like I said, my name is Andres and uh, I'm actually from Nebraska. And I just start going through the freaking sales talk. And we get to the end and we in sales school had not gone over very well how to like add tax and freight to the final of the order. And so I didn't even know how to like calculate that. And so right. I was like, so I got to the price build up. I said, do I send it here to the post office? Did the green card? And I said, cool. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go get Steve and to, and like to, to, you know, fill out the order for him. And when he came up, he was like, what is going on? And I'm like, this guy just bought books. How do, how do I charge him? He goes, what do you mean he just bought books? I'm like, he just bought books. Like I just sold something. <laughs> He's like, what? I'm like, I, dude, how do I calculate this? And he like, <laughs> so confused. It was, he didn't figure it out until later. But yeah, that was my first customer. Yeah, that's Super good. <laughs> Super didn't funny. even have to knock on a door. Yeah, man. So, yeah. so through that summer, how did you, like, what would you say, like, everybody's first summer has like this crazy impact on them right especially the people that come back what, what would you say was the moment where you were like like when after you were done were you like fuck this i'm never doing this again or were you like i'm coming back for sure like how did that transition work out for you well weird. we're skipping um, a lot of details there well i guess yeah you're right tell us about how that summer went and how you got to that point yeah uh so like after my first day yeah like uh, you know as the summer goes on you're like okay i can do this and then you get to like week three and you're like i'm never doing this again like i'm gonna finish the summer because i said i would but no <laughs> and then they, um and they bring you back i mean listen i didn't set any records by any means my first summer i wasn't top <laughs> first year um i had a lot of growing up to do that first summer um i always i've always said that i, I, I started selling books my summer after my sophomore year in college and um I always say if I had been approached or, um, you know, in the interview the summer, the year prior, I would have, that would have been like, no way. Mm. Like, no, not a chance. Um, but it's weird because a, a year, a year later, it sounded like it was a good idea. And, um, you know, I went out that first summer, um, but really it was like week three or four, probably. Um, we're like, that's like, <laughs> I feel like that's when I woke up like the first three weeks went by so quick it was like a blur right. and I feel like I woke up it was like week four and I was like oh yeah I gotta get going like this is like you know I, it was never in my mind that I was gonna quit um because I don't know that was just instilled I mean shout out to Danny he just instilled that to me or instilled that in me um you know getting ready for the summer so it was, I, I never, I was never going to quit, but I mean, you obviously think about it your first summer, especially, um, especially I'd say you're... maybe like week three, week four, um, where I was really like, oh man, like I said, I wasn't going to quit and I still I'm like 90% sure I'm not going to quit, but <laughs> there's like 10% of me. That's just like, yeah, fuck this you know, for sure. Yeah. It's always in your head, right? The, the, mentality of it the, the idea. well it was about week four that uh i got the news from our you know wonderful sales manager yvette that oh colin's gonna be moving in with nick yeah and i was like oh okay i don't really know this guy uh cool yeah. let's let's make it happen that's to be and... honest with you dude the, that first week was uh, that was like i've uh, yeah I, I i wanted to quit I'm not gonna dude lie. i remember all of this I let, remember, let me tell I my perspective. A... yeah well i was gonna get to these pony stories in a little bit but i want to hear this now because i'm curious yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, so I, I don't know why it was it was it's stupid but hey, your phone's about to oh yeah, yeah. plug that in 
So anyway, anyway, just just to tell my perspective, and you can fill yeah. in whatever details you care to, Colin. Um, I, I get word on the Sunday meeting, it's July 3rd and Monday is July 4th, right? And Colin's following me and yes. it's it's a pretty crazy day, bro. Um, do you remember that day in Vermont on July 4th? There's this thing going on in my turf in Vermont called the Rainbow Festival, where there's just a Mecca, like a full on pilgrimage of hippies to this forest mountainside just right in a random town in vermont where there's like there's no like, nobody's living in the forest but they're much. just it's yeah. weird it's crazy like the rainbow festival so that's going on where there's literally 10 10 000 hippies from all from california and other countries all the way across the country just migrated to this, I forgot about this. mountain town in vermont and oh when God. they're not doing drugs and celebrating life together, they're doing drugs and they're going down from the mountain. Yes, here we go. Um, they're going down from the mountain. This is the Rainbow Festival. There's Vermont. It's beautiful, but it's also smelly and disgusting. These people have not showered in months, if not years. And they're wandering down from the mountainside, going to Mount Tabor, Vermont, where I'm knocking on doors. And they're like harassing people. They're knocking on doors saying, hey, can I have money to get a ride back to like pay for gas back to California? And they're going into grocery stores. They're poking holes in the meat containers so that they get thrown out. And then they go dumpster diving after. It's, it's, it's weird. Oh Everything's God. crazy. Nobody likes me. And I've got this other kid with me just knocking on doors. It's the 4th of July, America, America, right? We had a like a situation where this homeowner like really, really intensely grills us and like says, you can't leave the car. You're on my property. You remember this, Colin? There's like this dude chilling out, drinking a beer with his friend at, at their house. And he's yeah. like, like pretending like he's got a gun, pretending like he's an officer type stuff. I don't really know what was going on, but really just the people were really upset and they clumped us in with all these hippies. So we get a, a, a customer or two throughout the day. I really don't remember. It was a blur. Of, it was like a less than savory 4th of July, but we still had fun. And I remember I'm like, the guy freaking out because yeah. I had a my, my ID, my driver's license. Yeah. And then an older driver's license, like an expired one. Right. I don't know why I kept it. I just like, when I got the new one, I must have just like slid it in front of the old one and just kept rocking. So he asked for our IDs. I don't know if you remember this. I do remember that. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> and he saw like the old ID, like once I pulled the new one out and showed it to him and started freaking out. He's like, you guys have two pairs of IDs, blah, 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 blah. Like one's, one's this. And then the other one, like, we're like, no, dude, this is literally check the date. It's expired. And he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you guys it, went to the festival, right? No. Oh, I, I did. But was, <laughs> I think technically when I followed you, Nick, I think it had just ended. Um, yes, I actually. And so it was like the, yeah. the next following like days aftermath of the Rainbow Festival. Yeah, where people were trying to leave Vermont and knocking on doors saying, hey, can I have gas money to get home? Yeah. Right? That's their sales pitch. And they smell terrible. They're probably intoxicated. Who knows? Wasn't there a, a oh, hippie wow. that took a, took a dump on the floor in like a gas station? Yeah, yeah. As well as like they would go up to like the misters over the grocery, like uh, the produce at the grocery store and they'd like wash their hands over the like the produce and then the grocery store is like, this is disgusting. Bro, what? Throwing everything out. And yeah, could you imagine? <laughs> You're working. I mean, that's where Some I learned. Guy just pulls down his pants and starts. <laughs> what would you do? Do you remember juice? Yeah. yeah. That's so good. that was like Colin's introduction to working in Vermont with me, right? You actually worked in New York, which was 
probably better for you, right? You, you really liked your, I mean, uh, not the first, kind of, not the, first like time I in. the first time I worked in was rough. Yeah. Whitehall, not, well, first time in New York. Um, yeah. Whitehall, New York, right on the border yeah. of uh, Vermont and New York. Man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> was it not a good school fit. system at all. Um, so, I mean, that was good. So, like, it was in my, my advantage, but uh, yeah, just a lot of low income housing and, um it was very poor a lot of discouraging factors going on i remember coaching you through a little bit of that and being like okay like you got this bro like just maybe i don't know do this do you need to follow me another time like one day you followed me and it was like all day just torrential down for that day. Like, no uh, sit down. I still think about that day sometimes, honestly. I it like flashback, terrifying yeah. memories. Did it like hurt you? Yeah. No, I just remember like being annoyingly and like frustratingly cold and wet. Um it was it was the wet part because it yeah. was, like it it did not stop. It was I mean from the from the time we got out to our cars in the morning to the time we pulled in at in the evening, it was just downpour. Yeah. yeah. And those good days, you those know, good days you in New England where it's like now hot enough in the summer, which is where it sucks because if it rains, it's brutally cold. Yeah. And you can see your breath as you're not going to do anything. And you can only try to like salvage your your outfit, your, your dryness for like a cold period, maybe two. Yeah. And then by that point, you're just like a wet puppy, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah. no, that, yeah, that day was just, long i don't even think i had a customer that day bro i think i goose egged we like struggled to get one or two freaking sit downs but like people were like angry when we knocked on their door that's why yeah so you you had rough pr in that that area though i didn't remember that yeah that was that was a rough pr time period for like that org up there like, well, we figured it out. Um, Colin made it through the, the rest of the summer. And uh, I'm really proud of you, dude, because, you know, it was like, whoa, all these external factors just like making my summer stressful. But like when I was able to like um, help you find momentum and success, I mean, you, you wound up hitting Sizzler by the end of the summer, maybe through bonuses, whatever. It doesn't matter. But uh, it was it was really satisfying for me, man. Like I had never had a rookie roommate that like went to Cancun or the DR with me, but you were there, and um, that means a lot, man. And I got to give you props because we had some shit going on, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and going back to the whole like when I moved up there and I wanted to quit, it was it was it was like I I was getting used to my turf and. Mm. I was in New Hampshire. Um, so the, the level of familiarity, like kind of in like, in like you kind of should, you know, uh, shake you up a little bit. Um, so you're, you know, the idea is that, you know, you're uh, back to square one, you know, um, getting outside your comfort zone. Um, but uh, it was mainly going, it was mainly the sleeping situation. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> going from a nice, like, uh, I, do you remember our, our our first HQ in Goffstown? Yeah, when you were Danny. Yes. Yeah, dude, that was like a. I'll describe this. What an intro! What a, what mentioned. an intro! I was like, this is sweet. They hook us up and he's had <laughs> apart from like the family, because you know how like sometimes you have post families like a small house, you're like afraid they're gonna wake them up because you bounce out of. You're supposed to like jump out of bed, but you're like tiptoeing because the family's gonna wake up. No, no, no. You guys were like on top of the garage on like a whole house, big ass house in like New Hampshire away from the family and they were cool like they were young they were cool. no like, no kids um they had a bulldog his badass name was family. uh cool family. i can't remember it but it was a, it was a badass bulldog um and uh yeah it was, they had this huge couch with like a pool table a uh, big flat screen like in front of like we we slept in like the den area like the man cave area so just it was great so i went from there to then i was like and again of course that's like 
my first HQ ever, right? So that's kind of like my ex- like those are like for my expectations. Saturday nights, Saturday nights are playing beer pong. Like I come in one time <laughs> yeah. or, or, for uh, a Sunday family. meeting in Boston. I had to crash the night before because it was a long ass drive, so we couldn't do it in the morning. And I get there, and these fuckers are like drinking beer and playing beer pong with their host family. And I'm like, oh, at the end of the summer? No, it was like a Saturday. It was like week five. We weren't drinking. Some of y'all were drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Oh, well, that was, it was like a Saturday fun. night at 11 p.m. So you guys had had a good week. You guys had great weeks and you guys were freaking letting loose. And hmm. I remember I got there and I'm like, because they're offering me a beer. And I was like, I'm okay. <laughs> and so, yeah. and we went to bed because like I had driven after work on Saturday. And then we had to go Boston the next day. That's the kind of host family I had. And then, and then, nothing, nothing against Natalie. Great, great. Cracker. Guy. Remember Cracker? Uh, rest in peace. Yes, yes, um, the dog. Yes, the dog. The dog died. Yeah. Yes. In the summer? No. 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 Years, After a couple of years later. I was saying, you run it over? <laughs> no, no, <God. laughs> um, but no, and then we, and then Nick, I would describe our room at our HQ as like a prison cell. Oh my God, dude! It was sardines, bro. We had a bunk bed. Bunk bedding it up. Uh tiny little closet like i don't think i think you maybe didn't it was you or me like didn't even like we half unpacked but like didn't really ever unpack because we nope. didn't have space yeah um and, uh, <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah and then a bit of a change and then she also had another room like she was renting out another room we so never met that other roommate that was like the room <laughs> never upstairs. met him yeah. his door was by his room was by the bathroom upstairs his door was always closed. You could see like the TV light, like the glow through, underneath. Yeah. Never saw him. Never once. What was his name? I couldn't tell you, man. Oh, like if there was like on the news a sketch, a picture of a murderer, and it was him, you would be like, "Hey, this is a guy," because you didn't know what he looked like. Could be <laughs> exactly. That's wild. So it is a bit of a difference uh, in HQ situations for sure. Oh yeah, but we did have a good breakfast spot. You remember Perry's? Yeah, great breakfast spot. Oh, yeah. I, I can honestly say I was blessed with great breakfast spots and just about every every uh, you know town or turf. But did you have over. the employees of the breakfast spot do execs with you in the morning? They did each, like both of our waitresses, like one bought from you, one bought from me. Is that right? Yeah, we sold. Yeah, I sold mine randomly like I, I knocked on her door and i didn't even recognize her <laughs> she, <laughs> she was like, like you're Colin. The and I'm like, <laughs> like no one out here knows me um so then i was like i had oh yeah i put two and two together but uh yeah we both sold the, our uh our waitresses yeah and uh there was that homeless guy that would make fun of our execs every day <laughs> you remember that yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's the hardest part of the summer is having a, a, a man with that is not how we did meet we did you. meet an encyclopedia salesman who was at that breakfast spot and he was like oh yeah i remember selling books and we're like with southwestern he's like no no <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i was really good at it and it was like yeah we yeah. we pretended like oh it would be an honor for you to even have access to our books so yeah. mm, let me see if like can you afford this? And it was just like a, a different sales process, but it was interesting to run into a, a bookman from a from the encyclopedia days, yeah. right? So yeah, it was interesting. Best pancakes on the face of the planet. Mm. Harry's Main Street Eater. There, although there is a cafe here in Lincoln that has mm-hmm. similar pancakes, just in the way they make them, and uh, I had I've had them recently, and it just brought me back. So good. Right. We are not sponsored by Perry's well pancake house or whatever. But you can be our sponsor if you're Perry's diner. Do this and plug your business and it's, it is a diner. Perry's yeah. diner. Oh. Something like that. Perry's Main Street Eatery. So, so you guys you guys seen that in that HQ the whole summer? I did. Uh, I did like <laughs> half and half. I did half in Danny's and I did half in uh, Brutal. Yeah. Brutal, Nick. Brutal. Yeah. Damn. All right. So then, so then now, now I can ask how, how, how did you decide that you were going to come back after that? Cause like you could lose some people. 
Well, I don't know. There's still more for us to yeah, talk about from this first summer. There's still more? Dude, Dude like no way. I didn't know this. Give me some more. First. Give give me some more. What? What do you want to know? Well, I'll I'll just like you fill in the details, right? Because we it wasn't my breakout summer myself, but it was my last summer. Um, and it was just kind of cool to to finish out, you know, Vermont, whatever. Um one of my favorite things about living with you, Colin, was just like how we kept each other like in the ball game with humor all summer long. Cause oh I mean, we would come home and talk in Arnold voice and like, wow, talk about, yeah, yeah it's a tough jokes. day, but we're tough men, you know? You and then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we get our, we would get our Arnold voice going. I can't, and then you doing that. can't forget I, I, Bentley, yeah, the Arnold's cat, that we like created this cat that was meow. I'm Arnold's cat. Meow, give me food. Tell you what, our our imaginations definitely meshed very well together. That was fun. Um, we actually and we had actually probably more time together as roommates than you normally have too, because the way things, if I remember right, uh, that summer we were so far away from every other org. Yes. So we had. We probably average like a three hour drive to, well, like three hour one way to yeah, Sunday yeah. meetings. We were up north that same summer too. Like, my, it was, yeah, like I was, Nick, I was an hour from Montreal at one point. Yeah. Like, it's how far there. I was. I was like, I'm in near Canada up there. Yeah. Um, no, so me and Nick definitely spent a lot of time in the car together too, which, um, you know, those, those are hours on the weekend that you, you definitely spend or, you know, it's more time you spend together because usually you know if you're closer to the sunday meeting you know you by the time you get to the sunday meeting you branch off and you know leaders meeting first year how do you so, sell that whole deal yeah. yeah so that that was also a fun aspect because i enjoyed it I, and the follow days were fun um I'm trying to did think you, who else i followed that did summer. you mainly follow nick because you were so close to him or yeah well i followed you danny um nick what was your favorite Oh gosh, put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> don't answer that. I'm sorry. I was like, I don't even know if I know. Yeah, good, good answer. Good answer. I was. Uh, it was a rhetorical. I don't know. <laughs> what I loved though was, yeah, spending a lot of time together was fun with the inside jokes and everything. We were close enough friends that, you know, Colin. Colin finished up his deliveries. I still had a number of them left. Colin helped me with my deliveries, dude, and that was a fun dude, that that was my last week on the book field. No, homie. That's what I look back to and like Colin and I were up to some, you know, shenanigans where um, he <laughs> helped us do. So he helped me deliver to this one customer who like we were trying to catch them at like, I don't even remember how it came about, but um, the, the circumstances led to where she, you even remember her name. What was, what was their name, Colin? Do you remember? Maybe not. That's fine. I, I'm trying to like bring it up, but uh, it was a younger couple with, they bought the Explore and Learns, but. Oh, Peter uh, oh Kane. Oh boy. Peter Kane. Yes. Yes. So um, she, she was young enough. She was like closer to my age, I suppose, but a little bit older. And they had a young kid. They bought the Explore and Learns and they were just like, hey, you guys like smoking weed? And we're like. Oh, shit yeah yeah and so like we delivered the book and like they were like just like come back later and you can like party with us you can smoke weed with us <laughs> so, so we come back and like their friend is over it's the the couple and we're just like we're smoking we're drinking we're Hit having a bonfire a great time and then this we were deliveries being there no this was <laughs> well i had finished up deliveries that day because I remember when I had got, I finished my last delivery and Nick was like, Hey, meet me here. And oh, like, this is it. And this I pulled up the GPS and I'm like, it was like two or three hours. Mm, damn. That's insane. And I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll see you when I get there. And Can I get there. Deliver? I get there. No. Well, I already this was probably like six or seven when he, when he gave me the, sent me the text. And so I get there, it's dark like Jesus. i'm calling them because at one point they're like they were kind of like 
on a back road yeah ish and i'm like dude i think i passed it like where are you at um and so he finally like directs me there and i pull in and park and there's a bonfire going and at this point nick's already like the center of the party like <laughs> you're like the book man yeah he's like standing up like everyone else is sitting down like listening to his stories he's telling pony stories yeah, yeah. um <laughs> and he introduces me and yeah that, that was a that was fun but yeah we, we stayed the night there and that was, that was that was a damn good time and then later on in that week you know go ahead colin stayed the night there woke up you guys stayed the night at the house yes because <laughs> we got too crunk bro hold on this is a customer that you had nick yeah vita cane and you were delivering uh yeah i mean i i had like probably 15 like, minutes left you made, her, you made her your last stop i think because of that that's it that's you, it you guys had some pre-negotiated something did you smoke with her when you sold her no okay fair enough i'll believe you Right. Oh. so yeah. then you guys just partied and stayed the night at a customer's house yeah instead of, instead of the jail cell yes, yes. upgrades and All we right. had a lit time oh my god <laughs> they were cool they were so cool they oh, were like, colin made out with the mom no <laughs> um so i wake up the Called next morning on. i wake up the next morning and i go back to the hq and pack up the rest of my shit and that's when uh my host parents from new hampshire they like it was a, it was a running thing all summer um because they were cool they were young um they partied like they had a fourth of july party we came back and like they didn't tell us they were having one just like this six foot tall bonfire in the back with like a dj and like just 30 people in the yard like what? insane and we're like <laughs> And here I am, like, <laughs> getting ready for a good night's sleep, like, <laughs> just like, you know, like, all right. So it was a running thing all, all summer. They were trying to get us a drink. And I really don't think we were drinking when we were in. When I thought came somebody out. was. Because I remember we were, oh, drinking, I we were playing was. water. I, know who was. I know who was. I think yeah. I know who it was, too. Yeah. Um, so it was, they were like, yeah, we're going to get you guys a drink. And then after a while, they kind of gave up. And they're like, well, OK, yeah. at the end of the summer. We'll have a big party when That's you right. guys are done. So then that was That's my that for messing that up. My yeah. So yeah. that was that day. And then, um, so I go back to the HQ, pack up my shit, a little hungover. And I drive, it's like another three hours to the to that HQ. And uh, get there, they're playing Pong. Uh, you know, just drinking. They, they got us a cake, like a, a personalized cake. With like all of our names on it and stuff. That's so cute. Um, and then we went hard that night because th at that point everyone was done delivering. Um, at least at that HQ. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and then we woke up the next morning and started driving to Nashville. Check out uh, back to back party nights to go to to go to check out. I and mean, we went in the checkout and then which, go to the checkout, which is a yeah. Freaking, and earlier in that week, when I was wrapping up on deliveries, we <laughs> had to over to be to Kenya. We may or may not have had some champagne to celebrate. And you got I remember us. pulling off on a side road, and I still have this Snapchat saved where uh, I like popped a corner <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, it's a good time. And uh, it's yeah, that was Pretty little rascals. Great summer, great summer. Um, yeah, so that was, and then we went to checkout, um, and uh, that's when, yeah, I made Sizzler, and yeah, that summer, that summer flew by, but it's also, uh, first summers are, are funny, because they, they're a marathon, but they're also, it's also like a sprint, like, you look back, and it's more, like, you know, a marathon, yeah, quick. Um, so yeah, it's an 800, it's an 800, that's which right. is what you ran in college yes you, there is some pacing um but it's there we go um yeah for the most part man it's all it's all out so uh no i uh, i really enjoyed that first summer um even though i didn't produce like i wanted to um and i think real honestly really like sizzler um definitely brought me back 
that was like kind of like the, the deciding factor. And I, I think I could be wrong, but I, I, I feel like it's that way with a lot of first year students that are 50, 50, um, which I, I always kind of, I mean, I understand that they want to make Sizzler, you know, selective and incentivize it. Um, but I always thought like, why not, why not send more people to Sizzler? You know, I think that would be a great, I mean, if, if they could do it, um, you know, I think that would be a great recruiting tool, uh, especially, if, you know, for, for all of those kids that don't know, you know, if they're coming back or not, because that's, that's where it clicked for me. I was, and, and not just because, you know, you're on the beach and at a resort, that's never hurts. Um, but it's really, that's the, f and if you think about it, as a first year student, say if you get selected in, let's say if you get selected in October and then you, you train all, you know, all winter, spring, you go out and sell books and then you come back, um, maybe check out a little bit, but for the most part, the only part of the business that you see that you know is your org and your campus. Mm. Like Sizzler is really the first time that I remember there's a saying uh, a couple of years when I was in the business was, you know, people that don't sell books, they look at Southwestern like through a keyhole. You know, if they were just to, like see through it and like see the, the big picture and the culture and, um, you know, they would, they would get it. They would understand it. Um, and I feel like for first years, I mean, can't, or Sizzler is like the first opportunity that you get that with the you full know. rest of the company you don't have to worry about memorizing your sales talk in the parking lot all you that. Know how, i mean well maybe well and i was an interesting case because i was at nationals for track so i actually went to european uh sales school, sales school. <laughs> um, but even then like i had got an idea of how big the company kind of was um but even then like you really don't know how big southwestern is until you like go to that first big company-wide meeting whether it's like a sizzler or like a grs, GRS is the big one. um that's when you kind of see like the you know the the full scale of things it's crazy to me i, I think the it's you're still always surprised because you still run into people who sold books that you're like you, you know when you bump are you guys ever bumped into an, an alumni you're like like amazed by how big Southwestern is. You know what I mean? I've yeah. actually had, I mean, there may have been one or two run-ins with alum. Um, one that I think of is when I was knocking for solar in San Diego in 2017, I ran into a door knocker. And I was like, she was selling alarms. And I was like, oh, I sell solar, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And she's like, and I was like, I used to sell books. And then she's like, no way, my boyfriend did that. And then I like went and got beer with Ryan Nikita um, there in San Diego. Cool guy. Not, nice. Nothing to show for that conversation. That's the only like alumni run in oh. that I can like remember. I never, I got so close. Um, I ran into the wife who was not very positive and <laughs> she like shooed me off, but she like told me her husband sold books and I was like, can I at least come back and talk to them? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> I, don't care just buy, no I need to know they exist. Dude, no. if you if you got somebody come out of your door, you gotta buy. If, if like there's a book in your house, you're gonna hook them up with the pre-approach or her, and you're gonna hook them up with the pre-approach and and just like sandwiches. <laughs> you want some, you yeah, want right. some chicken? <laughs> like, uh, I ran I've run into alumni in all the craziest places. I think uh one of the funnier ones was I was visiting uh, a friend in Portland and uh, we were just having dinner with some of their family and um, just talking. And they were asking me about like, it was their family and some family friends, just like a little get together. Um, and we were just talking and the guy's like, oh man, I gotta say you, you talk about Nebraska and all this stuff. Like you're just very easy to talk to. Like, how, where did you learn that skill? And I was like, oh, I, I just, I sold books door to door in college it's a crazy thing and uh yeah i was just i was in massachusetts and selling books door to door and he goes wait did you sell books to southwestern i mean this is this guy's like 70 this guy's like 70 like he's older maybe 60 and i'm like 
what how do you know about that and he's like i sold books and he starts singing the bookman song bro oh my god <laughs> i'm like what his first <laughs> summer was the same summer as dan moore wow and like he's like yeah i was just at lander's plaza the other day and i'm like what and it just like the conversation just got so much i mean it was already fun but it just like went to a, that level of just when you run into someone like that you're like what the hell that was a funny i mean it was just crazy like when you and that's when you realize like man this thing is a lot of people have done this and it's like a crazy story to tell that you sold books there's like so many people out there that did it. it's kind of fun yeah so. i that's the closest i ever got to running into an alumni um and i think weirdly enough i think i'm pretty sure seth uh bumped into him last summer two summers ago like they went back to that that area and the way he described it um i was like dude i'm pretty sure i knocked on that door <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> seth, hood, seth hood uh was also from doan shout out to seth shout he's out actually, seth. he's a current book man and uh yeah um it's a uh, it's a uh, story what did he tell you how did uh, he describe well, it, it was the same the reason why uh i don't even know how we were talking about it or how we started talking about it but he sold one of the towns i sold and it was a town that i I was in for like a week. I wasn't even really supposed to be there. Um, but I I knocked on the door because it was in it was a uh, it was more in in town. Um, it was like one of the main blocks. So it was it was a a neighborhood and a house you would hit. And so it, just the way he described the I think it was like a white house, and it was in the, mean lady. <laughs> Yeah, it was a uh, cool guy. A, the mom that like <laughs> shoot him away, and I'm like, that sounds eerily familiar. <laughs> did you, uh, um, did you ever meet like someone famous when you were knocking? Uh, we asked this before to our guests. Uh, the closest I ever came, and I was kind of, I was like, wow, that's pretty interesting. Um, my third summer, I met Aaron Carter and Nick Carter's sister. Oh, oh Miss Carter. <laughs> Miss Carter. Um, which it was really interesting how the how it came to be because they were on this like rural road in upstate New York, Mayville, New York, right on uh Jamestown Lake. And I I zipped past this house like multiple times because it was just on my maps and I don't know. And then one day, like, I, I didn't even know they had kids until, like, one day I saw, like, a middle school, like, late elementary age kid, like, in the yard. And so I was like, oh. <laughs> Marked it down. Came back. Uh, they got kids. They got kids. No, in a non-creepy way. Yeah. In every um, Go ahead. And so I came back and uh <laughs> can you imagine if like a like a pedophile accidentally like picked up one of our lost pre-approach pads how scary that would be <laughs> they would have to decipher some sk- kitchen but like stuff. they'd be walking down the street be like <laughs> swing set swing set <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrible oh sorry go ahead all right i know i got a mustache but come on now <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> fuck you <laughs> so where was i <laughs> you're talking James, about james sound like okay okay so i'm candy I, carter I, I pull in so like i pull in twist, the song's about her he wants candy it's a sister <laughs> so i pull in oh, as after gravy time and uh or during gravy time and she comes out and she was kind of aggressive at first, um, and she was kind of, I can only put it as a little bit white trashy. Uh, I can um, clearly picture this. With like yeah. a hint, like a hint, just a hint, you know? Just not no, like, not full. like Like suit on, but a mullet, and you're like. <laughs> <laughs> it works, but. What? Raises some questions. Got it, got it. Yeah. Um, and she's like, oh, you're selling books. I'm like, yeah, I said that twice already. <laughs> she's like, oh, well, I have a daughter in middle school. I'm like, I gathered that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so eventually she's like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. 
And then I dropped the price and she starts like laughing. And they, they don't live in like a rundown house on the side. Like it's a decent, like middle income house. Um, and then she just drops what I thought was a joke. She was like, oh yeah, you should sell one to my brother. He's a, he's a backstreet boy. And I'm like, okay, lady, like this is where I get in my car. And I'm just like, ha, 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 like cross you off. <laughs> and then and i'm like I, I don't even know what i said back to it but i must have been like i just must have been so i think i was so dumbfounded i was like oh, oh, oh really <laughs> like i was just like really like why why would you say that um and she was like yeah uh nick carter and i'm like your brother's nick carter and she's like yeah and i'm like wait a minute i mean you're also related to Aaron Carter. And she's like, yeah, he's like my, they're half or whatever step or whatever. Um, but I'm like, wait, hold on. And she's just like answering this very casually. She's like, yeah. And I'm like, I kind of need proof. <laughs> uh -huh. like, you know, like it, it was like a slow day and I was just like, ah, screw it. Let's see where this goes. Uh -huh. Um, and so she's like, yeah, she's like explaining like the family tree to me and everything. And she didn't show me any pictures because I don't think, and honestly, I think uh, that family is like super Strange. estranged from what I've well, I'm heard. Well, I'm looking up right now that Nick Carter filed a restraining order against Aaron Carter back in September of 2019. So that's interesting. Yeah. Let's just stuff, say they don't get along. Stuff like that. Got it. And so then I was like, hmm. So then, like, as soon as I got back to my car, naturally, I like, pull out the iPad and, like, I'm doing my research, right? And sure enough, her name was Ginger. Ginger, Ginger Carter. Carter. But what, on there? what a name. I think I, I think I, saw, I caught it on a Wikipedia or something. Or, I don't know. But she never bought. No, she never bought. She actually, I set up an appointment with her and she goes to me. Uh, HBH or just straight up ghost? Straight up ghost. No. HBH, if you've never heard, is home but hiding. Lovely. Yeah. Who? I think it's Danny. That has a story. I can't share it. I can't. And it wasn't Danny. They'd have to tell it to you. Oh, it was Mitch Johnson. I think where he knocks on a door and like the lights go off in the house. <laughs> like the port, it's like the old, everything that's lit up about the house. He knocks and he can hear them and then just boom. He's like, <laughs> it might have been Manny. We gotta, I, I'll get him on. Y'all ever sure. knocked on a door and then like someone hurries and answers the door and they're just like half yes. smooth because they're just straight up. Fucking. <laughs> yeah, I have a story about that. My first summer, dude. Yeah, yeah. bro. That Vermont yeah. summer, I definitely had someone. I want to hear this story, but I have a story about that. That's probably the craziest book story I have. So go ahead. Oh, yeah. uh, nothing crazy. It was just like, it was one of those moments where it was so obvious. Like, you knew. Um, I knocked on this door uh, like earlier in the week, and this mom came. This was like, this is actually in that town whitehall that i was telling you yeah. about yeah uh it was in like the inner part of town where like a lot of the, the, the neighborhoods were so i'm like walking down the street and I, I was just hopping door to door i was out of my car um and i knocked on the door and this this lady answered and she told me to come back so i'm like all right cool and she was a bigger lady um <laughs> lots to love lots of love she was yeah, <laughs> big frame um and then i came back like it was on my maps and actually this was the my first summer was the last summer that we did paper maps mm. so Oof. i had a little pre-approach pad and brutal uh yeah pull up to the house knock on the door i hear some like things being fumbled around it's like <sighs> that's when you know dude it's yeah. like two minutes i don't even know why i waited they don't well i i do know why i waited because like obviously someone was home so, <laughs> i'm like <laughs> you've been here. going three hours and not a single squirrel yeah. said how do you so then You're finally like, someone do. comes down and it's a dude and this dude is like 
probably five, ten, a buck sixty. No. <laughs> so he was and... eating sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I immediately wow. was like, I I would I would give anything to just go back and see like a my facial expression when you open the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Like, wow. Yeah, so uh, that was definitely like one of those. <laughs> I think he was bit. wearing, dude. He was wearing, yeah. He had the like, like a robe? yeah, robe or something on. Like he wasn't fully dressed. Did he have like a robe on and with like the pipe? <laughs> no. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's wild. Well, Andre, you got a story about that? Yeah, they're fucking. Yeah, this is probably the craziest. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll try to be gentle with it because it's obviously the topic's kind of heavy, but it, it was not, it was awkward. Probably the most awkward moment of my life. Great. That's um, good. Oh, man. It was the same situation where the screen doors closed, but the main doors open, but the screens up so you can hear into the house. You ever have that where you like knock and you can very clearly know like what's going on inside. Well, I'm in a hurry. I mean, it's my fourth summer. I'm selling in Vermont. Uh, no, sorry. At this point, I'm selling in Enfield because we got moved down south um, in Connecticut. And um, gosh, I knock on this door and I can I, I rushed up there. So like I just put my bag down, knock, step back three times and then you listen and I just hear moaning. And I'm like, oh, no. So I pick up my bag and you know how you go turn around carefully, a little pale, I knock something over and like it made a noise in the porch and from the side of the house i hear hello i'm like damn it's like uh hi my name's andre it's me it's me mario (laughs) i should have just said nothing wrong house i don't know why and i'm like ah but i I think you know if she would have got up and like watched me just run away with nebraska plates it just would not look good so i was just like (laughs) Hey, I'm a college kid. I'm selling <laughs> books. I am so sorry if I interrupted anything. I'm just going to, she goes, one second. And I'm like, damn it. And then I hear, come in. Oh, man. So I open the door. I sit down. She's like, I mean, her hair is like messed up. She's sitting on a couch and a bunch of pillows. And perpendicularly, I'm sitting like, so she's sitting here and I'm sitting like perpendicular to her. And so I don't know what else to do. So I'm like, so like I said, my name is Andres McCollage, kid from Nebraska, and I just take it from the top of the intro because what do you do? So I opened the slicks, go to hand it to her, and she's like, okay, so you're selling books. And I, and I, as I reach forward to hand it to her, she leans forward and it lifts up from the pillows that she's sitting on. And now rolls this Say it. women's toy. A dildo. Dildo, yes. Fanny triumphant bastard. It just oh. rolls. <laughs> Let's quote from what? Uh, Come on. God. Oh, you. Oh, that's you, uh, you, super bad. That's super, super bad. bad. That's right. Super bad. Danny <laughs> Trump, bastard. Yeah, bastard. movie quote. Uh, we do movie quotes. It's whatever. Um, anyway, so, I mean, it just rolls and falls just into the floor. I'm like, oh, no. I like said that out loud. I was like, oh, no, no. I'm so sorry. I got to go. She's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And she like picks it up and like throws it back under the pillows. And I'm like, I, I, it just, I, you, and I'm like, no, it's okay. And I, and I just, you can keep this like she touched it. Like, just go ahead. You keep it. It's all good. I'm going to just pack up. And I started like putting my stuff away. And I'm like, keep, have a good day. That's and when I, you wish you had a mask, right? And yeah. like gloves and stuff, right? <laughs> Funny part is the next day, this is a true story. The next day I go to her neighbors because her neighbors, as I was waiting for like to, when I first knocked, I saw that their neighbors had like, toys outside so i'm like oh well no to that come back so like the next day or two i come back and i go in talk to the neighbors get to sit down i can't remember if they bought or not but then as i'm leaving she's outside and she sees me you know because it, and it, this is not like a neighborhood where the houses are spread out it's like a very like a like a cookie cutter place so it's like you can very i mean it's like she's right there and so i'm like oh hey she's like hi i'm so sorry uh about this and about what happened and I'm like no it's okay like happens sorry she goes what are you doing again i said i'm selling books and she was okay was, what kind of i don't even know like so i took just take out like an explorer and learn because it's like what you can reach into the bag the and karma seat you. 
And uh, I'm like, yeah, it's like this, like for kids. And she goes, can you like, just keep this to yourself if I like buy a set of these? And I'm like, sure. I think she asked how much it worth for. So it's like 120 bucks. And she's like, can, if I buy a set, can we just keep this to ourselves? And I was like, sure, whatever. And uh, here I am telling it to the world. So <laughs> thank you, so, Mrs. Jones. Sorry, Carol. I'm just going to know what her name was. But, uh, At this exact address. Right? Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that was the, I was just like, and I called, I remember because I had uh, Danny, Danny and I were co on that summer and I, I called him like, bro, this is the, is the, towards the end of the summer. I'm like, this is the craziest thing that ever happened to me in a house. Bananas. And it was That's very wild. uncomfortable. It was awkward more than I wanted. But it was just not good all around. I don't know why mm -hmm. she thought it was a good idea to ask me to come in, but um, it was gross. Uh, Nick, do you have a story about this? No, my story is that I knocked on a door in Vermont and this guy hurried to the door with a towel around. Wow. He was like, oh, hey, man. Uh, yeah, cool. Well, I respect the grime, but uh, and I'm just like, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go do it, bro. I'll, I'll catch you another time. So he was he was he'd be doing a thing. So yeah. <laughs> do your thing. I'm going to do a, I got to do a shout out real quick to uh, any the people commenting on. I have yeah, Jaime Ramos. Is it, is it Jaime or Jamie? I don't know. Hello. something probably uh it says my fave show let's go all right uh angie quinones is uh saying mine too currently simultaneously listening to this and in class so we're good enough to be off schedule nice. from school that's great uh she also said that's cool oh this is about when i was telling my story about the alumni i met an alum once to ask if dan moore was still around and i was like yep he's the president now and they were so shook yeah dan's dan's uh that's still the president it's pretty wild so anyway, yeah. shout out to the people listening. If you guys have questions for Colin or for us, just uh, comment on there uh, and we will try to get to those as we can as a conversation calls for it. So be great. So yeah. A question I was going to ask that I've been meaning to ask is how, what are you up to now? Yes. Yeah, tell us about what happened later on. How'd you get um, out? How'd you get out? Uh, wh why did you feel like after that time that it was the right time? And then uh, one thing that I always ask about like what you're doing now, is maybe tell us the story of how you got there from Southwestern and then yeah. um you know like what oh, what helping. things did you learn in Southwestern that are helping you now with what you do okay so I'm gonna try to oh, we'll, we'll bring it back so that. Do, yeah. yeah yeah we'll, we'll keep you on track right. <laughs> sure so I ended up selling for four summers um my last being 2019 yeah um the good old days pre-COVID mm um and uh yeah COVID's a thing it's crazy um so yeah 2019 was my last summer um I, I I had a talk with my uh DSM before the summer um and I was kind of like hey I, I don't like you know if I don't hit my goals this summer um you know I really don't know how feasible it is for me to like come back and you know, my DSM just being, you know, real with me was like, yeah, you know, I, I would probably agree with you on that. Um, so I'm like, yeah, for sure. So I kind of already knew going in my, my fourth, I'm like, Hey, it's kind of like, uh, would I, yeah, you know, like all in or, or, you know, walk away from the table. Um, and so I got off to a decent start my fourth, yeah, decent start my fourth summer. Um, not great um my first week was pretty slow but then like my first two to three weeks like you know I kind of picked it back up um but there was a point in the summer where the Mr. Mediocrity kind of started like approaching me uh more and more but this time it was more like you know how much longer do you want to be doing this um you know do you really want to you know do another full year right and, and these were these are this was probably like weeks like seven six seven like right smack in the middle um and ironically it was actually after one of my weeks where i really kind of like was getting going um but yeah it just kind of like crept in there and i was able to fight it off for a few weeks um but then as my summer went on and as i you know, wasn't on pace to hit my goals. 
um, those last few weeks, it, you know, it definitely got a lot harder to, to, to fend off. And eventually, you know, I just, you know, couldn't do it anymore. No momentum. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so at that point I, I kind of knew, like it just clicked. I'm like, uh, you know, this is it. Um, take a victory lap if you want, <laughs> you know? Um, but no, and I, I got out at the right time. Um, I would, I would actually argue I maybe stayed a summer or two, too, too long. Um, so like based on the, I, I mean, I came in to forest at a very interesting time in its history. Um, historically it's a, a, a great, a huge organization in Southwestern. It's a giant. Um, but 2016, 2017, 2018 were a complete different story. Um, 2016 coming in, um, I'll, I'll use a sports analogy for anyone that likes sports. It was like being drafted by the Cavaliers the year after LeBron left. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. We were like, oh, we're at this great team that just they were in the finals last year and like on paper it's like you're on a good team right but obviously if you're paying attention and you know anything you're like oh but it's not gonna matter right because all the well and in this case it's just one guy but you know if it was a group of people you know everyone was leaving and 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 not on bad terms i mean people were just um Moving on. Moving on. Um, yeah. You know, Branding talking to guys, 8,000 unit producers, 10,000 unit producers, big, big players. Um, so I'm, I'm saying all that just to kind of paint the picture of Force was going through a, a rough turnover. And I, I want to say, like, after checkout, it had literally come down to like eight people. Just crazy to think about. Yeah, so that's very um, small. Very small, considering what it was. Muy pequeño. An organization of 60, 70 people. I mean, at one um, point, there were like two or 300. My, my first summer, yeah. I was like 185 people. Yeah. So right. So I really think, honestly, I think I might have gotten like a like a pity invite to come back. Like, I uh, just need people to uh, come back. <laughs> um, but honestly, like, like I said, I... I had what led me to come back that second summer more than anything, because obviously it wasn't the production. Um, one, it was, you know, let's see if I can, if I can turn this up and, and make something out of it and see what the student leadership side of things looks like. Um, and uh, well, I'm losing my train of thought here. And you recruited Mr. Seth Hood? Oh yeah. And then I recruited uh, Seth Hood and uh that kind of put me back on track but going back to the whole sizzler thing you know that's that's really the the moment where i decided i, I was gonna like come back for sure because i had been offered a spot at checkout um and i was still kind of like deciding um and uh props to danny man i mean danny i mean he looking at what force is now is really cool because yeah. you know he he hasn't lost that that drive that that fire that, you know, he's had since, you know, that those years when we were on the brink of extinction, you know? Um, so it's really cool to see all his work um, and, and all of our work, you know, because Nick, you had a part in it, Andres, you had a part in it. Um, you know, there's multiple other people that didn't stick around to see the full force like revival, um, but they definitely played a, a key part, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I definitely think I stayed a summer or two too long, but um, I think a lot of that was due to the fact that, you know, um, I kind of wanted to help be a part of the the rebuild. Yeah, for sure. And you mm -hmm. were, I mean, Seth is a big part of that organization. Yeah, so I uh, I brought Seth into the business, which, um, you know, I, I love Seth to death. Shout out Seth Hood. Um, you know, me and him have, have become really good buddies. Um, you know, we've, we've lived together, we've traveled, uh, it's multiple places together. Um, so he's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's a lifelong buddy. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I, um, I, I'll say that's probably if, if I'm known for that in Southwestern, I'll, I'll take that as a, as a win. I, I, I brought Seth Hood into the business. There you go. That's a huge win. Yeah. My sure. win is I brought Danny into the business. So 
Yeah, there you go. My um, win is that I kept calling around so that he could bring stuff. <laughs> we all win. We're all winners. Um, oh, yeah. So then, so then you left. Where, what, like, what happened to get to where you're now? Like, what was that? Yeah. So, oh, that's actually a good topic. Um, what life is like when, when you, you come out of the book field? <laughs> yeah. It's especially when you've been there for four summers. You're just kind of like my my image in my head is like you're like thrown out of like the bar, and you're like you do a couple like rolls in the dirt, and you're like you kind of like get up and you like dust yourself off, and you're like, oh man. That was a party, <laughs> you know. Um, you just kind of like wake up and you're like, "Oh, what now?" Um, no, I remember I got back from checkout uh, my last summer, and man, yeah, looking back on it, like, you know, I didn't make almost any money that summer. Um, I had so many expenses; it was mm. ridiculous. I mean, just things that went wrong. I mean, it was a a dumpster fire of a summer towards the end of it. Um, and so financially, I was like, oh, man, you know, I got to figure out something fast. Um, so, you know, I uh, eventually found um, an insurance company where I was able to do uh, traveling sales, very similar to uh, what we do in the book field. And um, uh, I enjoyed it. You know, it was, it was really fun. Um, in the end, uh, the traveling part of it was, was a lot Um you know, it's, you know, staying in a hotel four nights a week, paying for your hotel, paying for your gas every day. It's basically like you're on the book field four days a week, and then you come home for, for the other three. But um, every week you're going out and you're, you could be five hours away from home. You could be two hours. You could be in your hometown. It just depends, right? Um, so eventually I, I, I wasn't making enough money to really cover my expenses. Um, you know, theoretically, I was making the money I needed to make. Um, but after all the expenses, I was like, I just, you know, probably, probably not for me. Right. Hmm. Um, so eventually, uh, stopped doing that. And, um, that was probably, oh, that was like right around February last year. Um, and then COVID hit. So yeah, that was fun. Um, and I think I started working back. I went door to door uh, for a little bit for a, uh, a data entry company in Lincoln, which it was all right. They paid, uh, it was like commission, but um, again, just at this point, I was, I was still trying to find something that was going to stick, right? Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, I'd graduated, um, you know, I'd gotten a degree in business administration. So essentially I was looking at, you know, a career in sales, really, if I wanted to you know, be profitable and, and use my, not, not that you have to use a degree, but um, yeah. So I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, and then eventually um, about six months ago, uh, I stumbled upon a, a sale, a sales and marketing firm um, out of San Antonio. And they uh, recently just expanded to Lincoln. And so I've been working with them for the last six months. Um, things are going good. Um, you know, Got he's killing it. He's killing it. Um, he's killing it. He won't say it, but he's killing it. <laughs> getting to travel a lot. So yeah, you know, um, it was definitely a, a little bit of a journey after the book field to kind of find that that place I wanted to settle into. Um, and that now I can say, you know, I, I'll be with this company for the next five, 10, 15 years. So um, that's awesome. Um, I feel like I've, you know, hit the lottery in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the thing, a lot of things about uh, my my new company are similar to Southwestern, um, and you know, I have Southwestern to thank for that because it's pretty rare. You know, when you when you think about it, to be eighteen to 21, 22 years old, um, and get to experience a company culture like Southwestern. It, it, it if anything. You know, it, it makes you aware um, of the kind of place you want to work in after you leave. Mm. You know, you, you you learn to recognize what good leadership looks like. Absolutely. Um, you know, accountability, um, all these things, right? All these principles that Southwestern has taught us. Um, you know, they're just kind of ingrained. And so um, 
I, I definitely, because of that, you know, I, I, I had been offered a few other positions and I just kind of knew, I'm like, you know, I don't know. I don't think this is the best fit just based on kind of what I've seen and what I know. Um, it's just trust in my gut, right. Nothing against those companies. Um, you know, there were great places that I just didn't really line up with that. Um, but you know, being selective, you know, I was able to, you know, uh, you know, wait it out and find, find the, the place that eventually worked best for me. So yeah, that, that's actually, I mean, what about you guys? Cause that's a really good question. What was life like your first few months after Southwestern, like trying to find your next gig? Because that's probably a topic that a lot of listeners, you guys have a lot of listeners that, I don't know if you guys have, have talked about this before, um, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. What, what was your guys' experience like, like six to 12 months after you guys left? Hmm. I mean, I feel like, is this a good opportunity for us to hear why Nick left Southwestern? <laughs> I mean, that's I think that's me. a different, we need that on a whole, that's a whole, yeah. the whole, that's that's a whole episode on its own. But episode. either way, it doesn't, yeah. like, either way, like, it doesn't matter the circumstances, like, afterwards after like this next like i mean either way no matter how you leave you still have to Mm -hmm. look forward and be like all right what's next for me it was interesting because i had a similar experience that you did where well i left twice (laughs) right i can't i skipped the summer to back and then left again and um definitely different experiences each time i would say for sure that you know with the first time around i was not like financially good I, I owe you know i owed money to the company so i i went back to the thing i knew i was gonna make my quick with and that's when i used to work at, at the mall selling shoes um my parents had just gotten sp- split up they sold the family home so it was like a really low point actually in my life and i remember just thinking like, <laughs> ah, i can freaking get i can get through this and so I went and made a bunch of money um, selling shoes to people. I was good at it. I'd always been good at it. And like I'd set records at that store um, because I was like just so determined to freaking get out of that spot. And what I found was I, this is like a darker part, which I was it, I'm probably going to talk about this in a later episode with Danny, if I ever, if he ever like guest host and we each have our own independent episodes like Nick was talking about. But essentially like we are, our friendship and relationship was really strained because of that um and there was like sides of that all over but um it was not a good spot and i and i felt alienated i felt shunned like people i felt like i was an outsider and then i came back to help with the rebuild because that's something what danny told me he's like hey do you want would you consider coming back for one summer and helping me just rebuild this thing from from the ground up i was like okay so we went back and you know that's the year we recruited you and and then after i left that summer it was a lot better because of my, obviously years had gone by and um, I felt like I had left a good legacy, not a big one, but a good one. And uh, yeah, it, it, it was a lot more friendly and I still keep in touch with people who sold from like you. And obviously like, it's nice because now I have a really cool look into what's going on now and the things that Danny has accomplished. And yeah, so it was different experiences for sure each time, but uh yeah, the, the idea, the feeling of like finding the next thing and wanting to get it into something new um, was that you like skip and roll and skip and roll. To, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes like, you know, depending on the goals that you have for your life, it changes, right? So for me, I, you know, where I was um, at, at that point in time was where I wanted the direction I was heading my life was different too. So that had a lot to do with why it was sucky. Whereas like after the second time I had a better idea of where I wanted to go. And so it was a lot more flexible that way. So yeah, mm-hmm. good question. Yeah, for me, I, I resonate with what you were saying, Colin, with the whole leadership piece, knowing what real leadership looks like, and you're kind of searching for something that can kind of just meet the standard that books mm-hmm. just is, because it's so historic, it's got so much to it, and um, it's not just a typical job, it's not a typical internship, it's a fucking lifestyle, they throw you into it, and you're like, okay, all right, now that I'm afloat and I can swim and I can see how I can be a part of this, I mean, I, I, I was searching for that and searching to create that in solar and kind of just falling flat on my face and um, trying to work with book people and failing miserably. And then 
um, just getting into the more technical side of my industry and like actually being an installer and just kind of like bouncing around and then hopping in with a different book made, um, well, book alum made solar company that just totally like didn't go anywhere. And I was so just like stuck. Um, Right now I'm working with an old district sales manager, Mike Yandre and um, Julio Hernandez, who, who, you know, was just about at the DSM level himself. And um, I I think I found it, you know, I'm, I'm, with going to be with this company for five, 10, 15, 25, 30, a hundred years. I don't even know, man. Like that's um, Hell yeah, man. It is really exciting. I'm, I'm very blessed to be where I'm at and working with the people that I'm with because it, it has been a, a tumultuous journey leaving Southwestern and maintaining the relationships because they're all so busy that like you want to spend time with them. And I've spent time in Colorado with those book kids and those people have filled my cup and made me feel like I belong somewhere. And, um, you know, it's now I'm here in Arizona. Um, I've been bouncing around quite a bit and I've only been able to stay afloat because of that network. So I'm ultimately, um, you know, in debt to people like Hannah Reesberg and Zach and um, her older brother and, you know, the, the sales managers that, you know, kept me in, in the business and gave me the experience that I got because yes, it is, um, it's, it's a journey this life. And the principles, the relationships, um, the network is just like, I keep pulling to the network because, you know, I, it's a family, you know, you, you, you got your brothers and your sisters and your, your parents and all that, but like, these are your cousins who are so dope that it's like, you just walk into any situation with any book people. And it's just like, damn, you did that same thing. Wow. Cool. It was crazy. Wasn't it? Where's you, you know, what's this, what's that? So I don't know. Yeah. Finding, finding that work um, environment had to involve some book alum um, for me to, to feel like I was in the right place because I don't have to translate um, near as much of my like experience. I'm like, Hey, you remember when we did this thing in books? Well, let's try it in this now and let's try it this way. And, you know, it's, it's really refreshing to have yeah. that aspect with my work. So that's what I'm thankful for. One of, one of the things that like, I think is hard to find sometimes the, the thing that people, I think under, uh, under when they leave underestimate about Southwestern is the longevity that it has, because mm-hmm. when you have a company that's been around for so long, the structure of how to, you know, make the best chocolate chip cookie is like perfected 150 plus years of doing it, you know, like, so when you jump into different companies, sometimes it, you can see the lack of that structure based on the lack of just age of the company and so that's been probably more than anything has been the hardest thing where i'm like man these guys don't have like a structured sales talk they don't have like a they don't have like a general train good like the the sales training that are in all these different companies that i've you know been in and out of like over the years of since you know they don't have that stuff you know you you almost have to like do it for them but it's like like you 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 realize where you're missing that 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 longevity and i feel like that's the big been the biggest thing i've noticed to finish up your question is like the hardships of it i think that's yeah. been the biggest thing is like you guys are lacking structure so it's hard to put your faith on like the system because the system isn't even proven yet sometimes yeah and so whereas in southwestern you know you need 30 de- 30 demos on average will get you the, the one customer right that's mm-hmm. like by years and thousands of people that have been able to narrow that down to a science now. So that, I think that's the hardest thing. Yeah. I, it's funny because, uh, I like just being naive when I left and I, I joined another sales, uh, uh, job. I, I just thought it was like, I was blown away at how, uh, like universal all that stuff is the skills that you get yeah and, and, and then they, particular? well they would be like teaching parts um i feel like that like uh you learn in southwestern i can't i mean i don't know if i can think of any stuff about numbers particular. games and yeah or just like clothes. your uh, common your common sales uh take know, the pressure off let them know they can say no yeah. some people do that not everybody yeah, i was just like oh my god we learned that in southwest or like you know like duh like it's uh you know it's just a sales thing um but yeah i mean uh yeah you definitely get a sense of like what what you like what what you want in the future right southwestern is this 
this awesome culture and like once you leave it you know you're like anything else that you jump into you're just kind of like oh really <laughs> yeah you know you're missing you know you're missing it for sure yeah for sure yeah, that's her that's dope I like so it. i'm sorry if i'm interjecting a little bit did you did you want to finish anything else there no go ahead i think it's about time for that pony story i was about to ask the exact same question i think yeah. we need, this is this is we're near in the end of this and we need to hear colin sure it doesn't even have to be the pony story. You can give us like a couple and then the pony story. Maybe a couple favorite of your stories of self or moments in your South Western career that you're like, that'll never leave my mind. <laughs> um, this is like a super small one, but I literally had a mom. I knocked on her door and she was, she was out there a little bit. Um, <laughs> but she was like, I knocked on the door and she was like, what's going on and i was like oh, i talked to joe uh earlier he said come back here's what i'm doing and she's like wait what you oh, you're selling books and she had like a kindergartner so i was showing her like the the ell the early and, learning library right and uh so i'm like i just showing joe these books and and she's like okay well well I, I just don't have time i have no time like i i'm a nurse or she was some a teacher or not a nurse or something in that like medical field um she's like i'm i literally get home i like it was like this was right at like 8 p.m hmm. 8 8 30 um and she's like i i get no time to spend with like my family blah 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 blah. and she's like how long is this gonna take and i'm like i'm like starting to go back into my my, my spiel you know and she's like actually you know what and she just turns around goes inside pulls out her checkbook and like puts it down a little rail and she's like how much is that set just tell me how much that set is and i'm like oh that's that's like 110 but you know what everyone loves about the way i do business <laughs> you know <laughs> you only have to pay half today and she's like okay great and then she just like scribbled her name down and put like 60 or 70 bucks down and she like threw the check at me and she went back inside and, and closed the door i didn't explain how i was going to deliver the books <laughs> like <laughs> nothing right um i had to like write up the order like basically myself and like the car <laughs> and like finish it wow. um but that was like just a a really odd uh, street buyer i was just like she literally threw a check at me and i'm like Ooh. you you could have said seven hundred dollars yeah, possibly. I should have been like, might have, might have price objected, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure she knew what she was doing, but she was out there. Yeah. Another one was, um, I still remember his name, Mark Kudlak. He's in uh, Connecticut. I can't remember what town. Um, I knocked on, his ha- knocked on his door. He was like one of those houses that you'd knocked like three times and you'd, for whatever reason, you still had him on like your pre-approach. Right, it's like no, this I'm not gonna cross through. it off. This yeah. will come through. <laughs> no. Just had that feeling. Ah, you're gonna be a good one, buddy. Yeah. And uh, finally, one day, it's like second goal period, like mid morning, and guy answered the door, and uh, I immediately like covered the husband, I'm like you know, a husband objection, or I'm like, yeah, you, you know, it's probably more of your wife's apartment. He's just, like looking at me. He's like, he's in like t-shirt and shorts, barefoot um hair is still kind of like bed heady you know you can tell he's been out for maybe like 15 minutes um and he just looks at me like looks down looks up and he's like come on in <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like cool <laughs> so i get in and he's a he's a talker and he sits me down at the kitchen table he's like what do you got he's like what are you hustling and i go into my sales talk and he starts like you know making me coffee he's like you want anything um and i'm like no oh, I, I'm like well coffee if you're offering and he's like all right cool um so we get into it and then like i'm about to like get into the books and he like stops me he's like actually can we go in the living room and i'm like yeah sure he's like is that more comfy for you he's like yeah. yeah yeah so we go and sit on the couch and then i'm like giving my whole sales talk and uh I get all the way to the end and he hasn't said a word. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, this guy is like, I'm seconds away from this guy just being like 
yeah we're even not like the temperature taking questions he wasn't like being is he like kind of being secluded in those or yeah i mean he was again he was a talker but like when i was going through my presentation he just kind of just like shut up oh, and let me interesting get all the way through it so you're like well, i'll see yeah so i'm like and again like you know in the back of your mind you're like what am i even doing <laughs> sit down with a dad like mom's not here you know they're not buying um so then he starts going off on this tangent about like self-development like entrepreneurship he he started his own construction business which turned into like a house flipping business which turned into like a bigger business which he owns now and and he kills it doing what he does um so we kind of just like shared some like you know wisdom with each other um and eventually he you know he's like all right cool well, how much <laughs> and so i'm like oh, oh shit, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit so then I, I i dropped the the one through four on him like the price and you know what everyone likes about the way i do business you know i only take half a day pick up half the end of the summer um he looks at me and he's like buddy he's like i don't even know if my fucking kids are gonna use these but i'm buying them because you're a cool guy that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like thanks mark um yeah. and then he proceeded to uh he has like the he had this in-home like uh the system that like the ventilation system um so he was just like sparking cigs and uh <laughs> and i'm just like yeah fuck it why not like i'm closing them like with a cig in my mouth like you know? <laughs> um <laughs> but uh no he was a cool guy and then i remember leaving the house and the, my first thought when i got back in the car was like oh, why didn't i show him the gold you should have you know? shown the whole package <laughs> yeah and I'm like he would have bought and so then like it was in my head so i'm like oh when i come back and deliver i'm signing him up for the rest of the advantage books um and so of course i came back and delivered and then the wife and uh kids they were actually like on vacation they were like in san diego i think i remember <laughs> Go uh, they were in san diego Jesus. and uh like he just flew him out there that's how i kind of knew like this guy was doing well like he just flew yeah. his wife and kids out and he was the you know still working back home um but then when i when i came back and delivered the the rest of the family was home and uh <laughs> i'll never forget dude the kids the kids were like elementary school and like the dad is trying to get him pumped about the books he pumped <laughs> and the kids are, just like, the kids are like oh that's cool like, <laughs> you know and the mom the mom was even trying to like she's like looking at the dad like what did you fucking buy <laughs> <laughs> and the dad's like trying to sell the rest of the family on it and then eventually like here i am like thinking i'm gonna get two more <laughs> advantage books out of it and the guy's just like like the the mom's like i don't know, think we're gonna use them he's like i don't care He's like, I didn't know there were two more. <laughs> Give me this. Two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, I totally should just show that guy the gold or um, a bag. Just drop the bag. Yeah. Um, but uh, okay, so my big pony story. Yes, I know this. This is a great story. Uh, this was summer number four last summer. It's 2019. Um, so I'm Where selling, selling in Rhode Island, Rhodey. Yeah, that was a that was a fun summer. For that, there's other reasons why it wasn't so fun. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that summer, I was working this little town, Pasco. Yeah, Pas Pasco, Rhode Island. Shout out from Seth Hood, by the way. Hey, Sethy. Yeah, he's listening in. Um. Rhode Island. Rhode Island. So I'm going down this little windy road, um, trees everywhere. Um, I had stopped on my map, like at the start of the road. So I was working in and like the second or third driveway down, it goes way back, like way back. Um, and so it's kind of that book field moment. You're like, ah, oh, shit, do I do it? Do I do it? Do I? And then you always say that Joe Rogan, like, do a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> like, what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm just like, nah, screw it. So I go in. 
Um, Those are always good for stories. Yeah. And so I go all the way to the to the house and I pull up and I'm immediately thinking like, okay, this is a pretty nice house. Like not the nicest house I've seen in the bookfield, but you knew like it packed a punch if you were to go inside. Like, you, you know, like the, the front was like, so it was a big, big long driveway that came up into like a, like a courtyard almost. There was like a fountain in the middle, like a roundabout that went around the fountain into like a bigger driveway. And there was like a, on the side of the house, there was like a driveway over there that you could like pull around to. Um, so I get out and I park my car like right in front of like the door, like on the round of like, so my car is like 10 feet from the door and I get out and I knock big double door entrance uh, and I knock and I'm waiting and then I hear the intercom come on mm. and they're like, yeah, can I help you? And I'm like, yeah, my name's Colin. I'm the college student, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so they're just like, okay, we'll be right up. And it's this guy that comes out and uh, he was, he was Hispanic. No, he was, uh, no, he was, he was, uh, was Portuguese actually. Yeah. Uh, and so he, he comes out and rather aggressive. He's like, who are you? What are you doing? And I'm like, I'm like, here's my bag. I'm a college student. He's like, I need to see some ID. And of course I'm like, you know, <laughs> Southwestern ID. He's like, no, 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 like driver's license. And I'm like, oh, it's in my car. He's like, go get it. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, okay. So I, I go and grab it. Um, and he saw my plates that they're from Nebraska. And then so when he saw my driver's license, he, he kind of dropped his shoulders a little bit. He's like, oh, you're from Nebraska, you know? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm here, you know, on my summer internship. I pulled out my Facebook page, started scrolling down. Um, and he's like, oh, okay. And then he's like, wait, well, what are you selling exactly? And I'm like, oh, educational books, like SAT down to, you know, the little guys. And then he just, out of nowhere, he's like, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pull around the side and meet me in the back. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. Okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> here it is, here it is. And so then I'm like, all right. So then I get back in my car and I, pull over to the side of the house and park it and get out and as i'm walking up oh i forgot to mention i could see from the from the front on the side that he had like a it was like a nice corvette um and i'm like oh that's a nice corvette you know like obviously it's a nice house you know so it fits the picture and so like as i pull around the side and i park and i'm walking up um i don't have the best vision so i'm walking up and i notice that corvette starts looking more and more like a Ferrari. And then as I got closer, I saw the little prancing horse the pony on the on the front. There was a big old pony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's not a Corvette. That's a Ferrari. And then I look to my left because the house is on this side. The the Ferrari was like over here parked out away from the house and i look on and this is like the garage and th like three two or three door uh garage and uh, i look over both doors are open i see a porsche stacked on top of another porsche and then i see a it was a oh and then they had a fully loaded 2018 or 19 at the time it was like brand new uh rolls Roy no. it was you know, he was a it was a range river it was a range river like uh suv it was like decked out it was insane um and then he also had a oh, was, so you're telling me this guy he had a mclaren <laughs> he, he had a mclaren at one time but not yeah. not at the time that i met up with him so anyways you that's like my intro backpack. into like the backyard yeah, and so I pull around to the backyard, and I describe it as like a scene out of Narcos. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like this this beautiful like pool with like 
brick around the like the, the outside um there's like this like poolside like deck with like this beautiful like drapes and like this big nice table i literally pull around so i'm walking around and i see him come out like the the back door and then he like literally like starts like shooing people out and there was like his two his three kids and then they also had a maid who brought out uh like freshly squeezed orange juice and like sat it on the platter on the table and they like wow, offered me one geez. and like the kids dude, the kids were like the best trained kids i've ever seen on the book field <laughs> Standard like, attention, right? no they all came out like, in order and like sat down and then like, the dad was like all right i want you to pay attention i want you to listen to them and they were all like put like put their phones away and they're all just like like sat on their hands and we're just like attentive <laughs> super well like, behaved kids what? <laughs> what's uh, going on how do you do this yeah um and then the mom came out the mom was actually uh latvian Rari. so the kids are set up for life because not only are they loaded but they have like this beautiful european portuguese like multicultural complexion yeah. Yeah. um so i was just like you guys are cultured uh, but uh so anyways i started like pitching the books and he he's like he was the type of dad that like he interrupted me quite a bit like i never really got a chance to like it wasn't your ideal sit down mm -hmm. um but it didn't really matter um so i started pitching the books and he uh he's asking questions the kids are asking questions and he goes all right just he's like i'm on a time crunch how much and i'm like you know i start picking out like different packages and doing like my price build ups he's like well was like what package do you recommend for my family he's like you're the expert and i'm like uh well i think the only reason i didn't recommend like the entire bag is because they already like their kids were past the, the younger stages um, but everything else, I was like, this this has you guys set for, you know, all the way to college. And he's like, okay, that that package, how much is that? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> uh, yep. thousand bucks. Um, and he's like, thousand bucks. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, but but I'm like, well, I, I can deliver the books at the end of the summer, so you know, you want to pay a half time. He's like, he like looks at me and he's like. If it's for their education, I don't care how much it is. Wow. Cool. Wow. So he then he, he grabbed his like black uh Amex card. Amex card and like the heavy ones. <laughs> I don't know if you ever held one of those. Oh, they're sold just the like, big ponies, yeah. but they weigh more than a bad marriage. Is they're <laughs> mean. <laughs> yeah, like he just like he slapped it down and it was like um and so I wrote him up and then uh as we're like um breaking because i'm signing them up and he was in the, he was in a, in a time crunch so i'm like all right what do you do man like i just gotta know like what do you like what do you do and he starts like laughing and he like looks at his kids and he's like he starts like looks at his kids like what does daddy do and then his youngest kid who was like he was the kid in the sit down that like i bonded with the most um he was just like you fix cars <laughs> And then he like, he's like, yeah, I fixed cars. And I'm like, okay, but like, tell me more, <laughs> like, you know, because yeah, you're doing pretty well for yourself. And he's like, I own a dealership. I own a, uh, God, I can't remember what dealership it was. It was, uh, it was in New York city. No, it was in Rhode Island. Um, oh, is this the guy that fixed the car for? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah so it was uh, Providence. Yeah, he owned a car shop in Providence, but it was for high end cars. Oh, this is like crazy. he wasn't he wasn't fixing like Toyota Camrys, and and he was doing body work. So like my dad did growing up, and I, I didn't have that life. Yeah, so he was like he was fixing like Porsches and doing body work on like uh, the McLarens, like insane fucking cars and funny and this is brought this made everything just like that much better so about a week earlier um on my way from the breakfast spot to uh my territory 
I sometimes would like have the radio on just for like music and like you catch some like that morning news or whatever. And one of the stations I was listening to, they're like, TMZ, this just in, uh, Tracy Morgan um, bought a new uh, Lamborghini. It was like a hundred and no, I don't even know how much it was. It was super expensive. Um, and he, uh, he got a quarter mile from the dealership and he wrecked it. Ah. And it was like in the news. Yeah. And so then here I am at this dude's house like a week later. Yeah, and he's more. like, then he's at this point, he's like, show me pictures of his shop, all the cars he's worked on. And then he's showing me all the cars that he's owned. And he had like, dude, McLarens, Vipers, like Jeez. Lamborghinis, Rolls Royce, like the catalog was insane. And uh, he's like, yeah, I do body work. And actually he's like, do you know Tracy Morgan? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, actually, uh, I worked on his car last week. And well, then he started like, scrolling, through his, for anyone uh, who scrolling through his camera roll. And he had like selfies with fucking Tracy Morgan. <laughs> Jeez. Awesome. Man. So that was the dealership that he had bought the car from. And then when he broke it, he came back and, and got it fixed there. Um, okay. So I was just like, wow, that's, that's insane. But yeah, huge pony. Um, it was like 9 a.m. on a Saturday. So just great vibes the rest of the day. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sitting yeah, pretty. That's that. Yeah. I think that's our first like real legit big pony story. In the like actual podcast. pony story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm Omar Aribe and I like flew off a, a bridge i mean that was like to start the episode that that's an incredible yeah. episode for anyone who hasn't listened to it yet i like but, yeah nothing nothing too crazy uh on the book field honestly i was it's one of those things each summer i would i, I would kind of think about it i'm like i wonder if anything absolutely insane is gonna happen like i, I always had the 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 vision in the back of my head i'm like i'm like and i told andre this not so long ago i'm like this would be such a great like backdrop for like a, a thriller movie yeah like you go out do the summer internship you're yeah going door to door you're working all of a sudden you stumble on like a bad drug deal gone wrong right and it's like well, they, the cartels yeah. after you <laughs> something wild like that plug like, for bro. the estonian book movie that shit is hilarious i <laughs> i've heard about how can you watch that is that i've heard that they, that they made you gotta like that. purchase access to it and then stream it or something just look up america suvi or chasing ponies um that's the american name but america suvi is american summer in estonian so okay that's yeah dope. it's great terrific yeah. they, they really like dramatize the whole experience of like relocating and like feel, <laughs> like we still got stuff to do and they're in I actually met an estonian yeah. not too long ago i don't remember, i don't remember where i was but but they knew about knew books. About selling books. Yes, yeah. dude. Yeah. She was like, oh, yeah, I know about it. I just, it wasn't, I never wanted to do it. Yeah, all my friends did <laughs> Everybody it. in Estonia. Everybody in, like, Poland and Estonia knows what it is. It's wild. Yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. huge. Well, shit, that was a, that's, that's the pony story that we've been looking. That's good. I like that. It's a pony well, pony. Oh, yeah, so I can't remember his name, but. Shout out if to you. Uh, if you need body work done in Providence, Providence. Rhode Island. In Providence, go get Go have them work on your body. Mm-hmm. Um, well, hey, thanks for having me that'll, on, guys. This that'll, is awesome. That'll wrap it up. We'll, uh, we'll have a couple last minute things, announcements, Nick, um, about upcoming guests. And while you're pulling that up, I can talk a little bit about if anybody out there knows of alumni or would be interested in uh, helping us uh, uh, get going faster. We are opening up slots right now for sponsorships. So um, we have got a pretty good traction. We're getting a lot of views and a lot of uh, different uh uh interactions a week engagements a week um like in the thousands and so this is exciting for us just because this thing is picking up steam and so um if, if you're an alumni listening to this um and would be interested in having your business or a cause that you care about uh be shouted out on here reach out to us we are opening it up for sponsorships at this point as well um nick who do we have coming up here and when we got a pretty badass schedule here coming up so yeah so we got some fire people in the lineup we've been promoting them for a little while here um jordan ortmeyer amanda q and elena arndt are having their triple guest episode next thursday april 8th um quick um 
noticing of we we didn't have our episode this last Sunday. Um, it was supposed to be Will uh, Metro and Andy Laws. Will has a kidney stone that he had surgically removed on Tuesday. So we're, we're rescheduling those guys. Um, but yes, again, triple, triple hitter episode. Um, this upcoming Thursday, Jordan, Amanda, and Elena. And then after that, on Sunday the 11th, we've got Guayo Gambarda. Uh, am I saying that right? Guayo Gambarda? How do, we, how do I just pronounce? Guayo. We're going to have to we'll ask Guayo. him when he's on there. Guayo. Guayo. Guayo yeah. Gambarda. Guayo. Yeah. Um, I, I, crazy cool story he uh, submitted like a video to us about why he should be on awesome story so yeah look, for yeah. That. look out for that one that one's pretty enticing after that we've got on tax day April 15th Thursday the one and only Yvette Keister Morehouse Ooh, let's go yeah. um, incredible Bomb episode uh, the reason why the force was so well put together you know just a you know legend a, incredible book woman um and leader of all three of us you know she was our district sales manager yeah. she's awesome so that'll be a fun episode yeah, uh, yeah. and then after that Bad we're getting more check. people into the schedule we've got um patrick tulius coming up on saturday um may 1st and that's the only other um episode um, that we have so far we're getting chris q in there and chris q is coming up yep, yep. so we're getting yeah. some people in there as well and then there, we're in the chats with other folks as well to get um but so look forward to that um as far as that goes in i am andres gamboa one of the hosts of ponytail podcast nick tiverti is my co-host and a fantastic human being and you have been listening to a conversation with it says andres gamboa on the thing but it's actually colin appel yes <laughs> uh we're using my phone because we're in the same space <laughs> and so cool uh, we never Ugh. can but yeah. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Signing out now, and you guys have a killer rest of Peace, your Peace, one love. Peace, one love. And long live, uh, whatever the, what was that from? Pineapple Express. All right, bye. <laughs> <laughs>